you know, that's not sort of give you perspective outside of what you're doing for your yourself. Yeah. yeah. And what about judging? I know I've um, uh, taken some painting classes and stuff, and I this sort of this fear of you know being the artist and doing well, doing the right job, the good job. You know, you can get trained in how to paint and how you're supposed to do things. Like, who really judges whether you're a good writer or not? Like, that's the question. Like, for yourself, does it, you know, is it the fact that it is out there, people are reading it? Is it your um, friend who reads it and whatever? Is it yourself or all of the above? <laughs> like, who judges writing? What's yeah, a good writer? Yeah, I guess our whole judges to some extent. Um, I guess it's a matter of which, which judges you, 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 uh, Pay attention to, or you care about their opinions. You know, that's, this is the, the whole dicey thing about doing anything public: is you put your sense of well-being in the hands of other people. And I'm strangers. Mm. I mean, that's the whole thing. That, you know, you get reviewed, and some person likes it, and you go, oh, "Wow, well, that's an intelligent person. They really know what they're talking about." And then someone else goes, "You know, there could be quite scathing, you mm -hmm. know, at times." And you think, "Wow, what was that about?" And you talk to yourself, and you think, "Oh, well, obviously that person's unhappy, and they're miserable, or they're jealous, or they've got a problem if they couldn't see it, right?" You know, those are kind of. Uh, so do you have you to know. have a shell, kind of, I and think not you have take to. it? Yeah. Has that grown or changed from when you? It must have. Oh yeah, you get, you, you get you get thicker skinned and you develop a bit more distance, and you have to. Otherwise, uh, you, there'd be no point in going public at all if you weren't, you know, cap Prepared capable to, to some extent taking it on the chin. Sometimes, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So what's it like? Like you were living in Vancouver, lots of. Stimulation, people, stuff happening, and now you're on Main Island. Is it stimulating enough to be in nature and isolated to encourage your writing? Nature's never inspired me. No, no, no interest in nature. I mean, oh, nature's good. The whale. Uh, the that whale's good. Well, well that was that, that was that's, well, that was a whale, you know, and that was because it was my son was in it, you know, so it was. Um, but yeah, generally I don't go out and you know take a walk in the forest and, and groove on the tree. I mean, I do that. It's great, you know. Trees. Who doesn't like trees? It's, but you know that doesn't. Um, I'm so do you find it hard writing on Main Island for that very? Um, that there's not that action sort of or stimulation. No, there's enough stuff going on in, in, on on the island in terms of people and not. Or or just in my head, I'll, I'll, what I find generally mo the most inspiring thing is other books. Or movies, what, you know, what, you know, I get really inspired looking at stuff like that. I like you know the way film uh, you know uh, uh, edits itself together and, and and the way it structures itself, you know, and, and the way other other books um, how how they operate and uh, see, see what somebody else is doing. And I find that really the most inspiring thing is other other art and 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 visual arts as well. You know, I'm very you know drawing and painting these things kind of all add Combined. to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, interesting. You yeah. say filming when you, that's sort of where you started. So obviously you had that yeah. interest in stim, you know, yeah. did and I something think I, for you. I think I write fairly visually. You know, people often said you, know, you could make a movie out of this. You could, you know, this is seems script-like at times. You know, and that, um, so I, you know, I think I'm, I, I write very much for the eye. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because um, I'm really enjoying this book. I haven't finished it, and I, I want to see what happens, particularly to the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, it's in Vancouver, which is interesting to sort of, uh, you know, have key places that you know and, you know. Right. And sometimes I wonder, you know, uh, if somebody had asked me if that would be something I'd be attracted to, I would almost think, well, that, what kind of book would that be? <laughs> you know, that I would be, you know, drawn into a book like that. You mean that Vancouver's not a, a suitable setting? Well, yeah, or, or it's or just, just too, too close. Familiar. Yeah, right. and so it's not sort of, you know. A real, real life happens elsewhere. In yeah, real, in real something, cities. Yeah, right. yeah, something right. like that. But the one thing, um, how is it described here? He says, lean, crisp, about your book. And to me, this isn't the right way to describe it. Again, words, how do you, you know, express yourself? But it's almost like the book is like music. This it's one kind in particular? Of, or yes. What kind of music? And I, not rock and roll. Sure. <laughs> but this moving, um, I 
don't know how to describe it, sort of waves, which is really pleasant. It's really, for me, pleasant to read. And yet, interesting, I'm getting you know, involved in the people. Um, again, kind of intimate, you know, touching on intimate things without it being hard to deal with. Talk about this book a bit. Again, it was based on a family member, right? Or was this book uh, the one? Well, yeah, that's, but um, it, that was the initial stepping off point. Right. But, um, and so how, like to me, it must be so hard to start off with whatever, mm -hmm. and say so you have your um, characters, Cyr Cyril, is that how Cyril. you say Cyril? Mm -hmm. Connie, like, how do you move forward and do you see the end and it's so complicated. Yeah. Talk some, a bit about Some that. people tell me they, they write always towards an end. If you don't know where you're going, you can't, I've never known where the end was. Part of, to me, it's part of the, the fun of finding out, you know, the, why would you bother? If you knew what was going, where you're going, why would it, you might, it might take there? a little bit of the journey, the fun of the journey out of there. But then it, I guess I, I'm, I do a lot of revision. I do, I, just getting in there and churning around and finding out what's going on en route is part of the fun for me, and uh, or just the obsession. And it's just a, a kind of a habit of mind to see things in terms of narrative. So, to um, so know. do you partly become who these people are? Is that part of the process? I suppose. Inevitably, you think about them and you just mind continually churns. You know. I, I can remember walking home from school once when I was 12 or 13 and I actually had stopped on the sidewalk, which was in and of itself a strange thing to do for me, for a, a really hyper self-conscious, you know, teenager to stop and be seen to stop on the street because there'd be cars going by and they'd say, hey, that guy stopped on the street, why is he doing that? But I stopped because, because I had come to this epiphany, um, which was that my mind never shuts up. I, I suppose everybody's head's like that, I don't know, but it was always churning. Um, scenarios. Every person I saw, it turned into a scenario. Didn't matter whether you know them, knew them or not. Um, you were somehow were involved with them, um, gloriously, ingloriously. Um, in, in, you know, there some, was it, a story there? The, ev everything was an interaction and it, and it, and it, and it rolled on itself and that, that developed and then this came on to it and then you moved over here and you, you just wake up from this ongoing series of scenarios that never ceased unwinding on my head. And that, uh, for some reason, this particular day, walking over from school, I, I, something in me stepped outside and said, "Man, you sure do that a lot." And and it was just, oh, that, it was a real sense of uh, looking at my way my mind functions. Interesting. You know. What kind of child were you? Were you interested in? Were, did you read a lot of books and? <laughs> Not really. No. You know, were you encouraged to do that or mm -hmm. like? Uh, I was into sports. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I really read at all, um, other than the Cat in the Hat. I don't oh, think yeah. I ever really read a novel until I was about 15. You know, pretty late on, uh, on that. Well, it's fact, really I interesting that yeah. you say you were into sports because very much you, um, <clears throat> this is why I say it's kind of intimate about yourself when it comes to like the chainsaw and doing the boat thing in, the, mm -hmm. in this book that somehow this wasn't your kind of thing to do. Talk a bit about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, chainsaws are kind of terrifying things, you know. They're, people lose <laughs> fingers and parts of their bodies, um, and it's you know, it's, and again, it's the mechanical thing. It's like you know, I couldn't do the camera work in film school or the editing. That seemed very alien to me to do that. Um, dealing with machinery has never been my forte, right? So, and dealing with a machine that is potentially so dangerous was scary, you know, terrifying. Yeah. 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 So, and you know, I had a lot of pratfalls, you know, and, you know. Mishaps. Fortunately, none of them, you know, did anything. To yes, you. yes, or but, you anyone know, else. <laughs> no one that I'll admit to about you. Know. <laughs> and so, are you writing now? Is there a book coming out? Well, are you constantly writing? I guess you are. Oh yeah, I've always do. got something churning along. I've got a, a collection of, of travel stories, and I've um, they're all set. All but about one of them are set overseas. You know. And, and uh, are these places you've been? Yes, or this yes, yeah. I did a lot of traveling in my twenties and thirties. Um, and um, I've included, um, I've been collecting old postcards going back, some dating back to 1900 through the uh, early decades of the century. Uh, um, I guess the, probably the most recent was one is probably from the 40s or 50s. And I've, so I've got these old postcards and I've rewritten the, or I've written new text for the, so in between each story is one of these old 
funky old postcards. And where'd you get the postcards? I've been collecting them in secondhand stores and, and oh, uh, antiquarian bookshops and places like that. And um, and that's so it's got a whole visual side to it. The whole you know uh, these neat old postcards. Which people don't send postcards much anymore. I don't think they don't letter write either. No, they don't. But yeah. so that's um, kind of dates the book a little bit, I suppose. But um, it gives but that's it a whole visual because it's like a history yeah. and a past. Yeah, and it gives it, it a whole a whole visual side to it. So hey, it's a book with pictures. Yeah. Which is, so I think that's that's what I'm working. That's um, probably going to come up next. Is there? Can you say there's an average amount of time? I guess it de obviously it depends on the book that you might spend writing, or writing on something and then maybe leave that and go to something else. Or how do you always complete something before you move on? No, I've got things going, sitting in various states of uh, incompleteness. Yeah. And then get back to later, yeah. maybe. Yeah. How does your family? You've been with Eden for quite a while, and you have a son. How has your family um, helped your writing? And the move to Maine Island was kind of Eden's decision—not decision, but <laughs> move. Um, <clears throat> well, it's time on that. How they? Yeah. Well, it's just part of a. You know, when you go into the, you know, you spend some time with a pencil and pad or, you know. Is your family in some of your writing? It must be. It must yeah, be. I guess inadvertently. You know, there's so, there's, it's, it's so much a, a kind of a compilation process, you know, the writing. You, you're, you're taking things from here, there, everywhere, you know, stuff that you see, you know, in the street, at home, in a family, um, on Just the bus, on the, on, the, on, the, on the boat. You know, on the ferry on, on the way the ferry, over here. Yeah, it's just, it's whatever you see, and, you know, and bits of conversation is always accruing, you know, and you, oh, you can pull that up and that might fit in here. And so there's very much a sense of the, um, you know, the uh, collage quality to things, you know, at least in terms of early uh, drafts, you know, and I'm a great fan of, or a proponent of just write it, get it down, get some, get some text down and, and you can, you, you know, always. don't be too precious about it, you can always turf it. You know, this, it'll, or it'll still exist somewhere else. You know, and you can maybe use, reuse it again somewhere. You know. Do you love what you do? Is this like, do you get high when you're completed, or you're satisfied with something you've done? Uh, yeah, you get really excited. You know, you think you've come up with uh, something that is, uh, it's something, especially something you didn't intend. Well, thank you for doing this. And I, I've enjoyed the Main Island book, oh, and I'm really enjoying this, and I can't wait to see how it goes. Good. Thanks. <laughs>